Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we are looking at a whole bunch of new makeup. So we are going to be looking at the new Guerlain foundation, the new Armani Lip Maestro satin formulas, the Givenchy correctors and concealer. I purchased all three of the correctors. We're also looking at the Jones Row bronzer and Dusty Rose and the most recent Victoria Beckham eyeliner in this one is Surfside. So we'll look at this and we've got comparisons of things as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to begin with the Guerlain foundation. So we're gonna start off looking at this packaging here. And then while I go through the demos, I'll talk a little bit more about this foundation. But you can see here that this was designed to kind of match the uh, terracotta collection items. Our packaging here has a same uh, you know, cap with the different tones of brown in there. We've got our Guerlain logo at the top, and then it is going to be a pump bottle. So this actually has 35 milliliters, and I purchased shade 0N neutral. So this is supposed to be your like fair neutral shade, and it's kind of dark and yellow for a fair neutral. So this is it. So it does work on me if I use a very sheer layer, but if I want to build it up to higher coverage, it's too deep and yellow. So if you are looking, definitely know that these shades skew very warm. And one last thing to note, we do have a frosted glass bottle here. Now this can be purchased through Guerlain right now, but only certain shades are being shipped. So the others will say coming soon or notify me when available or something to that effect. So they will be launching fully very soon. guerlain has been doing this recently where for like um, just like a couple days, they'll have something available for purchase and they won't announce it. And then they shut it down. It's kind of like a soft launch. And then a couple weeks later it pops up and it's available for everyone to purchase. So I do anticipate that this will be available at other retailers. This is gonna be kind of like one of their flagship products. They're really expanding this terracotta line. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about this. Now all of this information is coming directly from Guerlain. We have 30 shades with 16 intensities and three undertones, neutral, cool, and warm. So this retails for 62 US dollars. It has 35 milliliters, which is you know good. A lot of foundations are either 30 milliliters or 35 milliliters. So it's pretty standard, but a little bit larger than um, some. So the Guerlain Terracotta Le Tent Healthy Glow Natural Perfection Foundation, very long name, uh, is a 24 hour wear product with no transfer. Their tagline is the perfection of a foundation, the lightness of a powder. And we have 95% naturally derived ingredients, which just means the original source was at one point a natural ingredient. And according to Guerlain, it says, pairing the lightness and radiance of a powder with the perfection of foundation, it's 24 hour wear, no transfer formula guarantees a beautiful, healthy glow as if you were returning from an outdoor escape. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm coming back from an outdoor escape, my skin does not really have much of a matte finish. <laughs> so uh, in this case, we do have kind of this airy formula. It gives you kind of this soft, luminous matte finish, kind of more like a powder finish on your skin. Actually, it feels really cool, you know, because you do have more of that powder texture if you go and touch your face. And according to Guerlain, this airy formula is gonna fuse with the skin and it's ultra buildable from medium to high coverage. And it is a luminous matte. I would say all of that is accurate. They also claim that it contains self-adaptable shimmer gemstone, which allows it to adjust to all skin tones. So I would have to say that, you know, overall this foundation is very nice. A few other claims, we've got maintain skin's hydration for 24 hours. And they also want to note that the source of natural argan oil that they used in this product is from Morocco and they're using the Taganine, I'm not sure if I said that correctly, network of cooperatives. And that was created over 15 years ago. And basically what that does is it's a network that helps safeguard local resources from um, Moroccan land and it creates stable employment in rural areas. And that's directly from the Guerlain website. So 
overall, as you can see in these demos, I have one where I wore it with what would be my normal amount of foundation, which is essentially built up. And you can see we have like, um, it's the way I have it on is pretty much a high coverage. It's like on the lower end of a high coverage foundation. And then I also have one where I sheared it out a little bit lightly. You can see if I wear the normal amount of foundation, it's a little bit too deep and warm for my particular skin tone. And if I sheer it out, it actually looks really beautifully beautiful. And you know, it's a really great finish. I have to say that since I've been wearing this foundation, I have been getting a ton of compliments here in person, just like random people at the school and stuff like that. So I think it is a really nice foundation. I'm not super pleased with the shade range because it's really hard to find a shade that I think works really well. And I have to say I was, it was really hard to decide because the last Guerlain foundations that released not too long ago, they didn't release here in the US, but it was the Paru Gold Skin Foundations. I picked those up in 00C and they were like way too light and way too pink. So going to 0N, I was hoping that would be better. And then the Guerlain L'Essentiel Foundation, I always historically wore 00N, which is not a shade in this new range. And I would have to say I don't have that one anymore, but this is similar to the 00N, but slightly deeper than the 00N. And I would say it's also a little bit warmer than it was. That one was always a little bit warm and yellow for me as well. However, this is just a little bit more so than that. Right, if I has been her. 10 hours since I applied the Guerlain foundation. And let me show you a closer look. All right, so the foundation itself is holding up well. I, again, it's allergy season, so I've been blowing my nose. You can see I have rubbed off some of that foundation. And I wanna bring your attention around the eye area. I'm also using the Givenchy concealer, but you know, I have the foundation, you know, here as well. So let me go ahead and bring you closer. All right, so first off, nose, you can see it's definitely worn away where I've used tissue. I wanted to bring your attention to this area. So when my face is relaxed like this, this is what it looks like. But notice when I like smile, all the lines that show up, and then it kind of takes a minute for them to kind of disappear. So it's almost like they freeze up. And I think that is because of the powder finish in this foundation. So I think, you know, that is something to take note of. So even from a distance, you can see after smiling and so forth, you can see that it's taking a little bit of time for this eye area here to kind of relax and go back to natural. You can see a little bit more emphasis of the lines there. So just something now, to as you can see, I do have a wear test with this foundation and it holds up beautifully. I did not test it for 24 hours, but I have worn this for several days for, you know, long days. I did not always like film an update or anything, but I have worn it for 16 hours and I would have to say it looked perfect afterwards. Like I'm really impressed with how this foundation performs. I think it is a really nice foundation and I love that powder finish. I think this is gonna be something that a lot of people really appreciate. So if you can find a shade range or you know, once it comes into stores and you can kind of test things out shade wise, I definitely think it is worth looking into and I think it's a pretty good price. You know, a lot of the foundations that have been coming out, I feel like the prices have been going up. Uh, you know, especially a lot of the ones I've been looking at, like the Clay de Peau and so forth. This is a reasonably priced foundation and for luxury beauty. And I think it is definitely worth exploring. So overall, I would have to say, you know, I would purchase this again. I think it is a nice foundation. However, um, I would definitely caution you to, you know, think about the shades because they do skew warm. Now, before we move on, let's just do a few foundation comparisons. So this is the Guerlain in 0N. This is the Sicily, um, Sicilia Le Tent, and this is 0R Vanilla. This is also not the best shade for me, but it is one that like really shears out. And you can see that this is going to be similar in tone to the Guerlain. You can see that the Sicily is just a little bit peachier this here's the Chanel Ultra Latent in BD01. This is my normal shade from Chanel now that 
they've kind of expanded that to a variety of products, but you can see the difference here, how much more ivory the Chanel is in comparison. And this is the Clay de Poe Radiant Fluid Matte in I-10, one of my favorite foundations. And this is kind of like the perfect shade for me. So you can see the difference. So this is the Clay de Poe, the Guerlain, Sisley, Sisleya, and this is the Chanel in BD01. Let's move on to the Givenchy concealer and correctors. So let's start off, well, we're gonna talk about them kind of all together. I have several different demos that we'll talk about with the details, but let me go ahead and swatch all of these for you first. This is the blue corrector. And you can see that this is gonna be a soft periwinkle blue, and you can see that it's a sheer corrector, which I think is really important to note. And uh, I really appreciate that sheerness. I think that is something that is so something to highlight. This here is our peach corrector. Notice this is more opaque. You don't really get quite as much sheerness or lightness from the peach corrector. And it's kind of like um, a clementine orange. So it's, it's definitely a very orange peach. And then we have our green corrector, which like the blue is going to have a lot of sheerness. So let's look at the concealer and the concealer I picked up in shade N95, which is my go-to foundation shade for Givenchy. We're just going to put that right there. And let's talk about some details. Let's start off with the correctors. And I have to say that I really do like these correctors. They have a little bit of a subtle radiance. They are not sparkly or glittery or anything like that, but there is definitely a luminous radiant quality to them, which is gonna add a little bit of brightness. Now, I would say that's particularly true for the blue corrector. The green has a little bit of that luminosity as well. The peach is even more subtle than that, and I think that's partly because of the opacity of that particular shade. So the correctors retail for 37 US dollars each, and these are all three of the shades. So the blue corrector is supposed to balance yellow undertones and illuminate tired looking skin. It brightens dull complexions. The green is going to reduce redness, blemishes, and color irregularities. It corrects hyperpigmentation with an exceptionally natural finish. This is considered their redness eraser. And then the peach corrector is supposed to correct and conceal dark circles, blemishes, and fine lines. Skin texture is improved and looks smooth. Freshness and luminosity are maintained while sallow undertones are neutralized. So that's directly from the Givenchy website. Now, as for these correctors, they're gonna share a lot of the formulation characteristics of the concealer. Some of those would be that 24 hour hydration claim. And we also have 95% natural origin ingredients. Again, that's like your naturally derived ingredients. That means the original state was a natural ingredient. And one of the key things about these correctors that is not actually mentioned with the concealer is that it has a 90% skincare base. So these are definitely nice correctors. I'll talk a little bit more about my thoughts on those in just a minute, but let's move on to the concealer. The Givenchy Prison Libre Skin Caring Concealer is designed to match the foundation shades. So if you already know your shade in their foundations, you know, the ones that have come out in the last two years, those are going to be a pretty good match for the concealer. So we have 24 shades. This also retails for 37 US dollars and they're looking at three different undertones, neutral, cool, and warm. Now they're considering this a three multi-purpose concealer. Now I'm just not sure which of the three qualities here they are highlighting. They're kind of similar, but they actually have it listed two different ways. So they have it listed as correct, care, and illuminate as our three purposes. And then another portion, they have it listed as conceal, correct, and unify. So, you know, regardless, <laughs> they're kind of all doing the same thing. And this concealer is going to, you know, correct 
for you know coloration it's going to conceal it's going to give you some skincare benefits it also is going to provide a little bit of illumination it's not going to be a flat looking concealer there's definitely a little bit of luminosity a little bit of a brightening effect so according to Givenchy it provides 24 hour hydration and radiance it instantly corrects and covers but also blurs dark circles imperfections and irregularities Use all over the face, which is what I have done today. So today I'm not wearing actual foundation. I just have this as foundation. It evens out the complexion without creasing or settling in fine lines or wrinkles. And so you can definitely use this directly just under the eyes or all over the face. I have to say it's it works really well in both ways, but I kind of prefer it as an over, all over the face type concealer. You know, kind of one of those quick you know, put it on just a little bit, smudge it out type products. So the skin texture, according to Givenchy, is smooth from morning to night. Your eyes look lifted and signs of fatigue appear reduced. You have a radiant finish and it's an adjustable medium coverage product. It does claim to be waterproof and water resistant. And I tested that a little bit and that seems to be accurate. And just like the correctors, we have a 95% natural origin ingredients. Now it does mention that this concealer is supposed to have a cooling effect. I do not notice that. Uh, I don't feel any sort of cooling. Maybe it's pretty subtle and perhaps that helps a little bit with, you know, puffiness under the eyes, but it's nothing that I personally have noticed. Now let's talk a little bit about these correctors and the concealer. And you can see I have a wear test in here as well. So I'm just gonna kind of play all the clips together so you can see how everything kind of worked on different days. I've been testing these for about, I think it's two, two and a half weeks at this point. So I've been using these for quite a bit of time now. And I would have to say that I like the correctors. I think the blue and the green are really nice. The peach I think is gonna be really great for people with you know, something to cover like really deep dark circles, but somebody who has a deeper skin tone. One of my issues with the peach corrector is even, I, I know I have circles under my eyes, but I don't have really dark circles under my eyes. Even when I'm using this corrector and then I cover it with foundation or whatever, it's just too dark for my skin tone. So I can always see <laughs> the peachiness through my foundation. So I think the peach one is just a little bit too deep, a little bit too orange, a little bit too opaque for me. Um, but I do think that it's going to work well for coverage for people with darker skin tones. So I think it's a nice product. It's just not gonna be great for me. Now, looking at the blue and the green, they both have kind of this sheer quality to it, which I think makes these a little bit more useful for an everyday product because, you know, one of my issues with green correctors, and I don't use them very often, I have used them in the past, but one of my issues is they are typically kind of an opaque product. If you really want to cover the redness, you know, you can still see that green through a lighter foundation like I wear. So, that's kind of historically why I don't use green correctors too often. I really have to play with it and shear it out a lot in order for it not to give me kind of that green cast. And um, so it's just a little bit too much trouble. This green corrector, I have to say, I don't have that issue with. So does it cover necessarily as well and as much of the redness as, you know, something more opaque? Not really, you're still gonna see a hint of that shine through, but it's gonna have a more natural look to it. And this is still a buildable corrector, so I can layer it on in thin layers, and I still don't really necessarily get that green cast to the extent that I get with other products. So I think, you know, that is definitely a, a really great high point for me, and it's something that I will now use this green corrector compared to other green correctors that I had just sit here before I tossed them. So I, I really like that sheerness of it. And as a matter of fact, it is sheer enough that I could even just, you know, put this on and not cover it with makeup if I sheer it out enough. And it's, no, it's not gonna get rid of my redness that way, but it will reduce it. And I think that is a really nice feature. 
As for the blue corrector, um, you know, I have to say the blue corrector is not necessarily something I truly need with my particular, you know, requirements, but I really wanted to try it because I think having something that can add that little bit of brightness is really key, uh, you know, on, especially in certain days. So I like to use this one under the eyes for a little bit of brightness when I'm feeling very tired. And I would have to say though, my number one spot is actually more on the cheekbones because it can add a little bit of radiance. I also like using this, you know, kind of around the eyes, not just underneath, but swiping up with it like you would, you know, if you're cleaning up after eyeshadow and so forth, you know, swiping up and giving you a little bit of a wing essentially with this blue product because it adds a little brightness and it helps lift your eye look a little bit. So uh, that's how I like the blue one. And I think, you know, the blue corrector in general is gonna be better for people with more of an olive or warmer skin tone because it's gonna help neutralize any sort of warmth in the skin and brighten that a little bit. So that's not really a major concern for me but I do think that that is a great way to use it regardless. This is also something that can be used as a little bit of a soft highlight. If you're somebody who just wants a little bit of brightness, but you don't want to use an actual highlight, you don't want that luminosity, that level of luminosity you get from a highlight, you could use something like this and it will give you just a little bit of radiance in a very, very natural way. So it just kind of highlights kind of the high points of your face uh, so that the light will just add just a little bit more something to it. So I have to say, I really like those correctors and I think they, uh, you know, I think they did a really great job on these. I'm impressed. As for the concealer, I think it's a nice concealer. And as I mentioned before, you can use this under the eyes, you can use this all over the face. My preference with this one is actually all over the face. I think it works well under the eyes, but it's not my favorite concealer for under the eyes. You can see it does kind of gather a little bit in my fine lines around my eyes if I go up too high. And I just, you know, it's a medium coverage, but I'd say it's like light medium. So, and with that radiance, sometimes I feel like it kind of highlights my deep circles instead of truly covering them when the light hits a certain way. So when you put it on, you know, it, it can look great and then you go in different lighting and sometimes the way that light hits it, it just kind of highlights, you know, kind of what's underneath <laughs> in my opinion. So I have to say, I don't love it under my eyes. I think it's, it's average, but all over the face, I really like it. I love how it, you know, really does, you know, kind of match your foundation shades and the way this blends out on the skin is very smooth. You've got plenty of time to kind of blend that out. You can get a very light layer. It's gonna provide some coverage, a little bit of color correctness, and it's just really comfortable. So I think that's primarily how I'll be using this concealer in the future. And I can see this really being a great everyday go-to product. Now, as you could see in the one demo I did, uh, this was today's look where I used concealer all over the face, I use the corrector, the green corrector, on the right side of my face underneath that. And you can see even not necessarily completely covering everything with a concealer, you don't really get that green cast to it, but you definitely neutralize the redness. So I would have to say, I think my right side of my face looks a little bit better than my left side of my face today. Now, as for the peach corrector, I mixed it with the Chantecaille Rose tint today. Uh, just to kind of see whether that would help lighten it a little bit. But unfortunately, I don't think it really provides the same level of correctness when I lightened it that much. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like that was a pretty negligible difference to using it versus not using it. And yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on that. So overall, um, you know, I think they are nice products. But it depends what you are looking for. And the concealers and the correctors are 11 milliliters of product or 0.37 fluid ounces and they have a six month shelf life and they're made in France. So I don't have a ton of correctors to compare, but I do have a few. Now, this is a primer that I use on special occasions, really. It's the Givenchy Prism Primer. Prisma primer. And this is a green uh, primer here to offer correctness. And I have to say, I really like this. So you can see it comes out kind of this minty green shade, very similar to that of the corrector. 
and you know this is going to have a little bit it's got a little bit more blue in it than this one but this was kind of my go-to now i have to say the primer though has a little bit more opacity when you spread that out compared to the new corrector. So even with the primer, I had to use certain foundations. If I use like a lighter coverage foundation, I would totally get that green cast. But if I use medium to full coverage foundation, there was no issue and it would look really beautiful. So it was just kind of like an extra step, but I would do that for like special occasions and things like that to help reduce the redness. So if you've tried this, uh, this one was shade 05 Vert. Uh, you know, I think it's a really great uh, product as well, but you can see how the two shades differ. Now, Jones Road has some face pencils, and this is shade six, which is one of their correctors. So I'm just gonna put that right there, right above the peach, so you can see how those compare. You can see this is gonna be a little bit lighter and similar tone, but not quite as deep of an orange. And then the last corrector I have, this is the Fit Glow Peach Corrector, which I really like this one. Uh, this is one that I use a lot. Well, I don't use it a lot, but I use it a lot for correctors. And you can see it has just a little bit more brown in it. It's not quite as bright of an orange. And when you spread this out, you can see that this one is also gonna be fairly opaque. However, this one is not going to be as luminous. This is more of a matte finish than the Givenchy. The Givenchy definitely is gonna be a little bit more radiant than the Fit Glow. And then I also just wanted to compare the foundations. This is the Skin Caring Glow Foundation. Let me just put it on my finger here. All right, so this is the corrector or the concealer in N95, and this is the Glow Foundation in N95. You can see that one's gonna be a little bit more yellow and a little bit warmer. The matte is slightly different. All right, and here is the matte in N95. So you can see that they are not exactly the same, but they go. And I'll show you this again a little bit later on after they've oxidized, so you can see kind of how they all dry down and compare. All right, so you can see here that the foundations are drying and you can see that our matte foundation looks much more like the concealer as it has dried. Still a little bit more brown where we got a little bit more peach. Keep in mind, these two are both older now, so particularly this one. Oh, and actually, I just remembered this matte one, I think I have actually in the wrong shade. The matte I have in one W105, so that is not one N95 like the lighter one. So just note that, yeah, maybe the concealers are meant to go with it, but not an exact match. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be a little bit different there. So while those samples are drying, let's go ahead and move on to a couple other items. We've got the Jones Road Bronzer in Dusty Rose. So I was really curious about this and they were kind enough to send this to me. So this one I did not purchase myself. So this is Dusty Rose and you know, I have to say it's a little bit rosier than I had thought it was going to be but I really like it more so as a blush though. It's like really more of like a blush bronzer. And you can see it truly is a dusty rose shade here. Let me show you a few comparisons. This is the Gucci bronzer in 01. And I'll do that vertically. You can see how much more brown is in the Gucci. This is the Hermes in 01. This is gonna be significantly warmer, but I just wanted to show that one to you. This is the Gucci blush in number five, rosy beige. And go ahead and put that right there. You can see that this has a little bit more mauve in it. And it's a little bit rosier. So it's definitely a little bit more suitable for a blush, but it is similar. So if you are looking for a bronzer like this, you know, take a look at the Gucci blush as an option as well. I know some people did uh, inquire about it because Jones Road's not available in their country yet. This is Surat La Vie en Rose, and I wanted to compare this one because they have a little bit of a similarity as well. You can see that this is gonna be more pink. And then this is Chanel Rose Ecran. This is in the old formula, but this one made me think of it. You can see that the Chanel though is going to be a little bit peachier. It's a little bit 
more, a little warmer. And then my last one here, this is Pat McGrath Flirtatious. And let's go ahead and put that right there. So you can see this is gonna be lighter. Again, it's gonna be a little bit peachier as well. So overall, those are the bronzer comparisons. The closest is actually going to be the Gucci Blush in 05 Rosy Beige, but again, it's gonna be a little bit deeper, a little bit rosier. So I'm gonna show you the demos here while we go ahead and talk about the details. Packaging on this is going to be the same as other Jones Road products, kind of like the eyeshadows and so forth, but this has a magnetic closure. You've got kind of that plastic uh, outer packaging with a mirror inside. We have 5.7 grams of product and it's made in the US with a one year shelf life. Now this is going to be kind of more of a traditional powder formula. So it's a soft powder. It picks up very easily, disperses well, but it's, you know, it can be a little bit messy, you know, just because there can be like a kick up and so forth, kick back from this product. But I have to say overall, I really like this and I think it's really great in particular as one of those like nude blushes. So that's how I'm wearing it today. I really like it that way. And let me know what you think. Let me know if you've tried this one or, you know, it's similar to an older Bobbi Brown shade. And so let me know what you guys think. Moving on, we're gonna take a quick look at the Victoria Beckham eye pencil in Surfside. So I just, I, I like her pencils. I think that they are very nice. Let me just go ahead and swatch that there. You can see this is a blue with teal. So it's kind of more of a blue based teal. And I'm just gonna show you this demo here while we look at this. Now the Surfside eyeliner, these are one of the satin kajal liners. So it's not one of the ones with glitter or anything in there. It's a really beautiful kind of teal blue. We have 1.2 grams of product. It's made in Germany, just like the other eye pencils from Victoria Beckham. We have a one year shelf life. You can purchase this with or without a sharpener, depending on how you choose to do that. And let's just go over a couple of comparisons. Well, really, we have one comparison. This is the Sisley Fido Cold Star in number five, Matte Peacock. And you can see that the Sisley is gonna have more blue, whereas the Victoria Beckham has a little bit more uh, green in it in comparison. I think these are both great. If you're looking for something that, you know, stays put better without smudging, the Sisley formula is better for that. However, the Victoria Beckham is great if you want a smudged outlook. Uh, for me personally, those don't like stay on the waterline or anything without smudging or, you know, I, they need to be a smudged outlook for me. Whereas the Sisley Fido Cold Star, uh, they they don't have to be, and they work for me in the waterline. They are waterproof, by the way. So overall, I think really nice new addition to the Victoria Beckham line. All right, and last but not least, we have the new Armani. These are the Lip Maestro satins. So these are new. They did have one before, but they have been reformulated and. I have to say, I really like these. And you can see as we are about to just move into the lip swatches in a second, let's go ahead and start those. You can see actually that with these lip swatches, I cannot remove all of the color in between the swatches. I even went over it with a foundation brush and these are truly long wearing. I mean, the color stays put. You'll notice, I'll show you an application demo in a couple minutes but you'll notice that I have like patches of like areas where dry skin on my lip came off from exfoliation, but the pigment of the lipstick stuck to those like new areas, those raw areas, and I could not get it off, you know, even with exfoliation. So truly a long wearing satin liquid lipstick. I have to say, I think these are really, really nice. Let's talk a little bit about these while we're looking at these lip swatches here. There are seven shades and I picked up four of the seven. There is an eighth shade, I believe in some other countries, but here in the US, we're only getting these seven. Now, one of the things I find a little confusing is the website actually gives you the names of the products. It does not have the numbers. However, on the actual product, we have the numbers without the names. The box has both, but it's just, a a little frustrating there. So anyway, um, number, 
I have the numbers and the names in these lip swatches so that you can see them. Now these retail for 39 US dollars and we have 0.13 fluid ounces or four milliliters of product here and they are made in France. The suggested shelf life is one year for these. Now, according to Armani, these are high pigment, 24 hour hydration, thanks to the inclusion of glycerin in the formula. And they say they have a velvet matte finish, but I think that is, you know, that's a, a typo. It also mentions a luminous satin finish and that is more accurate. It does have buildable coverage, but you're pretty much looking at high pigmentation level right from the first swipe. But we'll look at the buildable coverage in a minute. And it claims to have an exceptional eight hours of comfort. I have to attest to that, that is accurate. And it instantly gives the appearance of more radiant full lips. Now the formula of this, uh, according to Armani, it's an ultra thin gel texture that glides onto your lips like ink delivering long lasting color that smooths the appearance of fine lines with a luminous satin finish that wears down to a soft bitten lip stain. The gel fusion technology evenly disperses color pigment throughout the formula for maximum color payoff with long wear and stain power in one swipe. So I have to say, you know, these are really awesome. If you've been looking for something very long wearing, this is it. Now, are these transfer proof? No, they are not. However, they don't transfer as much or as readily as I expected. So if you, when I was drinking out of a clear glass to kind of test it, and if I put the glass softly to my lips, I had no marks on the glass. If I pressed it a little bit more firmly, that's when I would have some transfer. So. You know, it's something to note though, because you still got that high shine finish on your lips. It looks like it's just gonna come straight off and it really doesn't. Now, texturally, the way these feel on the lips, the first swipe, they reminded me a lot of the YSL, uh, the YSL glossy lip stains that they used to have. I'm not sure if they still have those, uh, but it has that vinyl texture. It's not quite as vinyl textured as you know, a product like that. However, you can definitely feel that. You also can feel a little bit of that like kind of evaporative alcohol texture that you get with a lot of liquid lipsticks. So it can feel like a little bit cooling at first and you can feel it kind of dry and evaporate. So those are definitely two things I noticed straight off the bat. Now, I have to say no issues with that. If you are somebody who's doing a lot of lip swatches and removing lipstick and exfoliating them a lot, a little bit of that alcohol can feel a little tingly. It doesn't quite get to the point where it's stinging, but it de you can definitely feel it a bit more if your lips are a little bit more raw. So something to note there. Now, according to Armani, they recommend three different application techniques with it. So I did a little clip here to show you those three different techniques. So we're gonna start off with the more subtle application. And it says, for a subtle stain, apply one to two dots onto the center of the lips and blend out with your fingertips. And then you're gonna get kind of just a soft stain to say it looks really beautiful. If you do this with the lightest shade, number one that I picked up, Summer Adventure, uh, you know, it's such a light shade. It really just blends in with my lips, but the deeper shades, this is uh, such a beautiful way to wear it. And you can leave it like that. It still feels comfortable. It doesn't feel dry, like a true lip stain, you know, like there's still a little bit of that vinyl moisture feeling on your lips. It's just very thin. And then the second application for more definition, use the custom doe foot applicator to line the lips and then fill them in. And yeah, you know, this definitely works. Unfortunately, I did a better job the first time I had to redo this little demo here because I realized you couldn't see it all in the camera frame. So uh, yeah, you know, it works that way. However, I do think if you really wanna line your lips, use a pencil or something because I'm starting to get a little bit of fine lines, a little feathering and so forth. And I notice when I go really up close, I can see a little bit of migration of that product if I'm applying it with the doe foot to line the lips. If I'm just putting it on, I don't really notice that, but you can see when you're using the doe foot, it applies it a little bit more concentrated 
uh, in a line versus when you are kind of spreading it out on your lips. So it'll give you the appearance of using a lip liner, but if fine lines around your lips are starting to become an issue, then I would recommend using a pencil over using the doe foot in this case, just you know to reduce any risk of feathering. And then the third application technique, we this is what we did for the lip swatches. This is to give you the most intense color applied to bare lips starting at the center and spread. So, you know, overall, I think these are a really, really nice product. I have to say I am incredibly impressed. You know, I thought these would be a nice liquid lipstick. That I, you know, I, I figured they would be, you know, something that lasts a little bit longer than a lip gloss and so forth, but I did not expect to for them to last quite as well as they have. You can see I do have kind of a wear test here from the other day and you can see what it looked like. I did wear it for actually three more hours after that, but I didn't really do anything during those hours. I was editing, so I wasn't like eating or drinking or anything. So they looked exactly the same afterwards. So I would have to say, um, yeah, overall, very, very impressive. In the wear test, when I'm showing you what it looked like after, what was it, eight hours or something, I still have a little bit of that vinyl texture on my lips. It still feels comfortable. It still feels like I have a barrier on my lips. Very comfortable. It's thin, but it's there. And, uh, you know, I have to say, I really appreciate that. I appreciate how, even though they're not transfer proof, they don't transfer as easily as I expect it. So most of the shades in this line are going to be, you know, high pigment, deeper shades, but I have to say, I really like them. Let's go ahead and move on to some arm swatches. We're starting off with shade number one, and we're going to use my hand for these because they can be a little messy. So this is one. You can see this is going to be kind of a light rosy nude, and I really like this shade. Really beautiful, soft pink with a little bit of warmth. This one here is called Summer Adventure. Next on my lips right now, we have Summer Cruise, number nine. You can see this is kind of a bright fuchsia pink. And I have to say the first thing this made me think of was the Victoria Beckham Alter Ego. So we will swatch that in a minute. And then number 10, we have In Love which is a beautiful like classic red here. This is a pretty neutral red. And then 11, Riviera Escape. And you can see this is also gonna be a red, but there's a bit more pink in here. So it's kind of like a warm pink in here mixed with the red. It's not gonna be super cool, but it's definitely more of a pink vibed red compared to number 10, which is in love. So let's look at a few comparisons. All right, the first thing that number one made me think of is actually the Dior Rouge Dior Ultra Care Liquid in 483. This was a limited edition shade, and I have to say I've worn this one a ton. Um, this is a go-to shade for me. This is one that I take with me when traveling. You can see they're very similar. The Dior is gonna be a little bit rosier, uh, but it is kind of a close match and this was limited edition. So if you missed it, you know, I think it's worth looking into this Armani shade. Two other shades that this made me think of. We've got the Clay de Peau. This is the Cream Rouge Shine in 201 Calante Orchid. And I don't think any of these are going to be like a dupe for the Armani, but they did make me think of it. You can see this is going to be a little bit deeper and there's, it's also just a little bit warmer than the Armani as well. This one's not really going to be a true match, but it does make me think of it on the lips. This is 111 Chocolate Cosmos in the matte. And this is gonna be a little bit more brown, but you know, they both kind of make me think of, you know, the same type of thing on the lips. However, this will be matte. By the way, the Dior Forever, that's matte as well. And the Armani, of course, is gonna give you that luminous satin finish. All right, and then, this one here is Victoria Beckham Alter Ego. Let's put that right there. Oh, you can see Alter Ego is more pink. There's a little bit more purple in the Armani. And then let's compare it to the Guerlain shade. Now this is, oops, <laughs> this is a velvet. This is from the holidays. This is 777. And let's put that right there. You can see that is much more similar. There's still a little bit more purple in the Guerlain, but that's gonna be closer to the Armani shade. 
All right, so the last two, you know, they are kind of classic reds. We're not going to do any comparisons for those, but I hope this was helpful. And I'd love to know your thoughts on all of these items here. You know, we have so much new makeup and I have to say, you know, I'm excited about things that have been coming out. Everything's been really nice. So just a quick rundown of my thoughts on everything, starting with the Guerlain foundation. I have to say, I like this foundation. It does have the terracotta scent, which is not my favorite, um, but it does fade away pretty quickly. I actually tend to smell it more with the bronzer than I do with the foundation. So something to note there, it's a little bit more subtle. And if you have a good color match, I think that's great. Now for me, I will wear it in a sheer application because I really do love the finish. Um, but yeah, I think that's great. Now as for the Givenchy, Correctors, the concealer, I like it best for an all over face concealer. And I think I'll be using it that way a lot during the summer in particular. And then the correctors, I think that they are all great correctors. This is gonna be better for deeper, warmer skin tones than mine. But the blue and the green, they are more sheer. And I really like these, particularly the green one. That's gonna work really well for me. The blue is not truly intended for my particular skin concerns. But overall, I would have to say that these are a win, but I don't think that the actual concealer is the best under the eyes. I prefer it all over the face. And then moving on to the... Jones Road Bronzer. I really like this particularly as a bronzer blush. I think it's great, you know, kind of like an everyday, easy to reach for type thing. You could easily put this on kind of as a bronzer blush and then just add a tiny pop of color on the cheeks and it's a really beautiful look. I've worn it that way as well. And then the Victoria Beckham pencil. It's a great addition to the lineup. I, I, really like the color and I think it's just something a little different a little unique you can definitely just kind of use this with a neutral eye look to give it a little pop I like kind of smudging it out and as you can see with today's look I paired it with the Charlotte Tilbury but I patted it on so I just get a faint bit of color from the Charlotte Tilbury and yeah overall really nice and the Armani Satin Lip Maestros I love these uh I have to say though, getting the colors off, the pigment off, it, it's a very strong pigment. It adheres very strongly. It's really difficult. So even with an oil-based cleanser, it's hard for me to remove all of it. You know, it kind of has to wear away a little bit. So just something to note, you know, it's a powerful pigment. And yeah, those are my thoughts on everything. So I hope this was helpful. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Sign for notifications. We've got a lot more new items coming up soon that I've already been testing. So I will see you very soon. So have a wonderful day.